Well, I'm Sean Buckley, editor of Fierce Telecom. Today I'm joined by Jason Wall, senior technologist of the University of New Hampshire's Interoperability Lab. Jason is here today to talk to us a little bit about the Interoperability Lab and its role in the networking and telecom industries. Jason, thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. Absolutely, I'm glad you could come. To start, what's the role of the UNH IOL in the telecom and networking industries? Uh, well, we've had this role for quite a while. Um, for about, we've been out in operation since 1988, and we kind of operate as a neutral uh, third-party location that can uh, bring people together to uh, accomplish uh, interoperability testing, um, to sort of guide the direction of the industry uh, when it comes to the development of standards, um, and also educate students while we're doing all of this. I and mean, we actually treat our students as one of the products that we develop here. Um, so that people know that they can come and hire graduates of UNH who have worked for us, knowing that they are going to have four years of experience already under their belt before they even go. What benefits do organizations get from bringing their products and devices to the UNH IOL? The biggest one is the cost savings um, over either doing this testing in-house um, or dealing with a lab that is sort of trying to build up all of these uh, interrupt test beds from scratch. Uh, the way that we are able to operate, we get everyone to come in together around a particular, particular technology, um, and then they share the cost of that testing over, uh, you know, over the entire group. And since they're also bringing the products that they're going to test into the test beds and leaving them in those test beds, it kind of magically builds the interop test beds that we have here. Um, so there's the cost savings. There's uh, the reduced time to market. Um, because we're on the cutting edge of whatever of the networking industry and deeply involved in the development of the standards and building our test specifications uh, based on those standards, they know that the testing that they're doing is going to be relevant right away. And so we sort of try to get in early in the development of a new technology uh, so that everybody can work out the bugs before they are even ready to go to, to market. So they know, people know that if they've come through the, the UNH IOL, they have um, kind of got a leg up on everything that's going on. Can you explain the UNH IOL's membership model? The membership model refers to the multiple consortiums that we have around the lab. Uh, there are each individual testing programs, and each testing program, uh, the companies join as a member of the testing program, um, which, as I said, allows them to distribute the cost of performing interoperability testing over everyone who's involved in the consortium. Um, that allows us to either purchase or receive donated uh, networking equipment or testing equipment. Um, it allows us to build out the infrastructure. Um, it allows us to hire the students to do the testing. Um, and it allows us to keep a very close relationship with those that we're doing the testing with. Usually the people that we are testing with um, you know, they're kind of the who's who of industry, or they might even be a new startup company. And either way, they know that they're kind of getting involved in a group that is all going to work together um, to accomplish their goals. What are the biggest um, trends that you're seeing in the telecom and networking industry these days? The biggest trends, uh, it, it really depends on the technology space that you're asking about. Um, obviously, uh, this year, with the exhaustion of the IPv4 address space, um, IPv6 testing is going to be very large. It's also going to be a big deal because uh, service providers are finally wanting to deploy in their networks. Um, and not just because we run out of addresses, but also because of the functionality that it brings to new services. And those new services include home automation, smart grid, anything uh, with multiple, multiple devices in the home. I mean, large scale amounts of things, you know, individual sensors that are all going to be networked together. Um, and these are things, bridges that have never been crossed before, and I think that's what we're going to see over the course of the next year in that space. Um, machines talking to each other, uh, broadband expanding to almost everywhere uh, in the world, hopefully. Um, and all of those devices are going to have to learn to talk to each other. All of them are going to have to have co common protocols for doing so, and they're all going to have to be tested. Um, the other areas that we're seeing expansion include uh, efficiencies in the data center. Um, not just, uh, not just uh, energy efficiency, also, um, which is a big deal, obviously, um, with energy efficient Ethernet um, and a couple other protocols, but also efficiency in the protocols themselves, um, which we're doing through like our data center bridging groups and also our storage networking groups. Finally, which testing technologies are generating the most interest from your members at this point? Well, again, I bring up IPv6. 
um, that's only because it touches so many spaces. Um, and that interest has kind of come um, both from the top down and the bottom up. So we've seen that interest come from our members directly and we've also seen it from the industry bodies that we deal with and also the, uh, the end users. So it might be service providers or otherwise who are looking to test that. Also, the next uh, stages of Ethernet technology, really bandwidth in general, right? So we have the next stages of Ethernet technology, including 40 and 100 gig. We also have uh, the next stages in broadband access um, with later versions of DSL and passive optical networks. Uh, right now we're testing GPON, but that's going to expand pretty quickly. And also point-to-point uh, -point Ethernet access networks over Fiverr. Um, so if I had to say two things right away, it'd be bandwidth and IPv6. <laughs> Jason, I want to thank you for your time today. It's been great talking to you at the uh, UNHIOL. Thanks. It's been a pleasure, too.